Hi there. Today we're gonna learn how to prune a plum in the form of a vase. This is easy. This tree already has a form of a vase. We're not the half far away. So usually what we need is to let it go on four branches. This tree is already in flowers because of the uh, wild weather we have here. After summer, it made a little rain and then immediately it was hot again. Therefore, we didn't have any winter. So usually we, we prune it when it's still dormant at this time, but this year it has some flowers. So don't worry, let's go ahead. So for a tree, to have good, a good system is it needs to be open in the middle and usually with three or four branches going upwards, outwards. Usually each branch will be divided with a leader like this one and therefore this we don't need it at all. We have to remove it or shorten it at, mo at most. We shorten that one this one is a bit in my, in my way, so I'll shorten it a bit, but not much, that it will be at the same height as the one we cut previously. So this, in this area, in this branch, has to be the highest point. Therefore, we remove a few from here. Here I can see we have a dead branch, and we can remove it all, as you can see. As you can see, it's dry wood, and therefore it has to go away. Any dry or dead or diseased wood has to go again away. This is dry. Usually you can recognize it simply by, usually it has some pinholes, and also the bark is shriveled. That's why you can know if it's dry. If you're doubtful, you can pick a blade and take off a slitter of skin. This will usually either be dry or green. If it's green, it means there is still life inside of it. So, we cleared this one. Now, here we have a branch which is going outwards, toward competing with the light with this branch. And so, we have at least to shorten it. We shorten it to the next protruding branch which is going our way, the way we need it, and we remove it this way. When pruning any fruit tree, it's nice to ask your friends if they need any cuttings. For example, my friend asked me for a cutting, I'm gonna keep this so he can graft his trees. Some grafts are copyrighted, so it's best to check what type of fruit you have. Okay, so let's continue. I'm gonna keep a few cuttings for my friend. For example, here we have one which is crossing directly into the, the way of this branch. Now either we can shorten it because this is a bit intrusive, this branch, or we can remove it totally. Now what I'm thinking about is the only solution is to remove it properly. So we'll remove it from below. That way, we opened up the area. I know we may have lost a couple of roots this year by pruning it that way, but don't worry, life goes on. So this one is going inside. We don't need it much because it will create the same problem of the branch we've just removed. And next, we're gonna see how is this branch going up. For example, the leader of this branch died down. These trees, to be sincere with you, had a very dry summer. Here we had a lot of heat waves. In fact, most of the time we spent it inside or at the beach. But 
they survive. They are drought resistant, but a few branches, it's normal for them to die, dry ba die back. So we have to find the bench, which isn't dead yet, and we cut with it. This is all dry. As usually, there are the pinhole signs. We can see. And it's important we remove it because when uh, insects start to bore them out, it means they can keep going downwards towards the healthy stems. I'm gonna remove a couple of dead branches. And here we have a couple few more. We can also listen if I don't think it on the microphone. You can hear it. Are some peacocks. They are mating season, so you can hear them all day long calling for their partner. I'm removing dead sticks as much as possible, because these in the future can provide a problem as they will shelter borers inside of them which may cause huge bigger problems when cutting from a tree from a tree to another it's important that you always have some sanitizer i already did it before i switched on the camera and you spray a couple of times this is sanitizer Denatured alcohol, 70%, and we let it dry. Usually, this won't take long to dry, a couple of seconds. So, usually, I spray it until I set up, bring my tools and everything. Usually, it's paper dry, bone dry. So, it's dry, we'll continue. That way, we don't carry disease from one tree to another. After we prune it properly, I can see we have another one here. Where you may be, some that can be normal due to frost, to frostbite. So each country has its own problems to take care of. So here, what I have, what I'm seeing is we have a leader in this area. So let's choose wisely one branch to be leading. It does if you can do it this year because there's a lot of competition, and you're not still decided. Don't worry, we can leave it for next year, and then choose wisely in another year. There is no rush to perform a quick pruning because when you're doing things in a rush usually mistakes happen for example here we has we have a cross crossing branch we remove it these are usually fruiting buds it's important to recognize fruiting buds that so that we don't do more damage than we can. Let me show you the fruiting buds. And this. Here in my hand, we have a couple of fruiting buds. We have this one, this one, this one. These bunches usually provide fruits. And they are what keep on growing every year and still provide fruit for a long time. Here we have a few more dead branches. That we have to remove. What will be crossing down here? For example, we have another one here. It's always important to watch the tree from various angles. What we watch from here main not see an error when you watch it from the other side and so on. So it's best that you see it from a lot of different angles 
which will help you decide which fruit branch to remove. So here is a bit clear, let me see this branch, the ultimate branch we have. So here we left this leader, there we left that one. Here we're gonna see which one is still alive. And this tree will be balanced around three, four branches, which is ideal. I'm gonna remove a couple of dead branches, like before. It's important that these sticks are removed or shredded entirely from the ground. We don't leave them here running around. Don't worry, I'll pick them up afterwards. I'll bring the shredder on a different day so that they are reused. And our tree uh, mulching, they are used as mulching for our trees. I'm sorry if my English isn't perfect. It isn't my primary language. And we didn't grow up with YouTube. So practice wasn't done much, except in school. And while reading, Hopefully here we can see a form and I'm thinking about leaving this as a leader. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna shorten this a bit. Always when shortening, always try to find a secondary branch. So the trunk, the branch will focus its energy on this one already. Now what I'm thinking is about removing this branch. This is in the middle, even this is this crossing. So we'll remove the point. And this we can shorten it a bit to its next growth. It's important to put, make cuts close enough and that is closely by done. We have to remove some sticks that we will watch around the way. For example, this one is dead. It doesn't matter if we lay, leave one small match stick, one dried match stick, as these will fall on their own. But thick ones, it's important that we remove them. As we can see, all is, all is pruned, it's important that one leader isn't taller than all the rest of the tree, like we have here. So we have to shorten it a couple of notches, we find the next bud, and therefore it's still high, but it's high with its other leaders. So therefore they will grow at the same speed and height. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. See you soon.